Welcome back. We're going to finish where we left off in the last video. In this video, I want to do a full example solving the longest common substring problem with a suffix array. For this example, we're going to have four strings, S1, S2, S3, and S4. I have also selected the value of K to be equal to two, meaning that we want a minimum of two strings of our pool of four to share the longest common substring between them. I have also provided you with a concatenated text we'll be working with, as well as the solution at the bottom of the screen in case you want to pause the video and figure it out for yourself. The first step in finding the longest common substring between a set of our four strings is to build the suffix array and the LCP array, which I have displayed on the right side and the left side, respectively. While I will be conducting the longest common substring algorithm, notice the variables on the left as they change. The window LCP and the window LCS values will track the longest common prefix and the longest common substring values for the current window and the LCS length and the LCS set will track the best values so far. So let's get started. Initially, our window starts at the top and we want the window to contain two different colors. So our rule is to expand downwards when we do not meet this criteria. As I expand down, the suffix is green. So we still only have one color. I expand down again and still one more green suffix. I expand downwards again and now we arrive at a blue suffix. And here we are able to perform a range query for our window. However, our query isn't fruitful because the window longest common prefix value is zero. So there's no longest common substring here. When we satisfy the window color criteria like we do now, we decrease the window size. I decrease the window size by one and still nothing interesting. I decrease the window size again and this time look what we found. The current window contains a longest common prefix length of two. So we obtain the longest common substring BC and add it to our solution set. Now we keep shrinking the interval size because we meet the color requirement. Our window size is now too small because K is two. So we need two different color strings. So we expand once more. Now something interesting has happened because we find an LCP value of three which is larger than our current best value. So we update the solution set to have the string BCD instead of just BC, which is one character longer. Now we get to shrink the window size. The window is now too small. So we expand the LCP value of zero here. So that is no good. So shrink the window size. Now expand to meet the color requirement. We get an LCP value of one, but that doesn't beat our current best, which is three. So shrink the window. Now we need to meet the color requirement. So expand. We have only blue strings. So keep expanding an LCP value of one for this window range. So that's no good. So shrink. Now we have an LCP value of two. We're getting closer to our best, but still not good enough. So we have to shrink and let, let it go. Now expand. Now something interesting is going on here. We have a window LCP value of three, which is equal to our best so far. So instead of saying that the CDE, our newfound uh, longest common substring value beats BCD, which is of the same length, we keep both in the solution set. All right, so now let's shrink our window interval because we meet the color requirement. 
Now expand it. We still need one more color. Expand again. Our LCP window value is zero. So shrink and shrink again. Now expand LCP value of one here. That's not good enough. So smaller, expand, LCP value of two. Okay, we might be getting closer, but we meet the color requirement, so shrink. Now expand to meet the color requirement. These two strings have an LCP value of zero, shrink. Now expand, now shrink. Now we've reached the end and found our solution to the longest common substring problem with four strings and a K value of two. As I was doing the window expanding and shrinking, I wanted you to notice that each time the window either expanded or shrank, I only ever moved one of the endpoints downwards and they were always going downwards. So we know that the number of windows has to be linear in proportion to the number of suffixes that we have. And the number of suffixes that we have is the length of our text, t. So we come to the conclusion that there must be a linear amount of windows that we must consider, which is really good because we want our time complexity to be quick. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I will catch you next time.